Number three, obstinate and pliable. Some of the boys were playing near the gate of the city and they saw Evangelist speaking to a little Christian. They were not surprised at this because they knew that strangers who said they came from Celestial City always talked to the children. But when Evangelist turned away and little Christian began to run across the plain toward the narrow gate, they all wondered where he was going. Little Christian's running away. He must be going to look for that Celestial City, said another. Then he'll be lost, exclaimed a third. We ought to go after him and bring him back. There were two young moles named Obstinate and Pliable who knew little Christian very well. They were older than he was, but the three had often played together. Obstinate was not a pleasant companion, for he loved to have his own way, and Pliable used to give in to him for the sake of peace. Little Christian did not care much for either of them, but he liked Pliable better. These two moles were vexed when they saw their little playmate running alone over the fields, for although they were often cross and disagreeable to him, they did not like thinking of him being lost. We must make him come back, said Obstinate. What a stupid rabbit he is to believe everything he is told. Come along, then, said Pliable. I'll go with you. So the boys went off, and as they ran, they shouted the little Christian to wait for them. But the child was frightened when he heard their voices and would not even look back. If they take me back, he thought, perhaps I may never be able to get away again. He ran as fast as he could, but he soon began to feel tired because of the burden on his back. And Obstinate and Pliable were taller and stronger than he was. So before long, they caught up with him. Where are you going? cried Obstinate. I wonder what you mean by making us run after you in this way. I'm going to the King's City, said Little Christian. Won't you come with me? Obstinate laughed. Ha! I should think not. What would be the good when we're as happy as possible at home? We should be a great deal happier with the King. His city is more beautiful than ours, and we shall be quite safe there. I've told you before that our own city is not a safe place. As if you knew anything about it, said Obstinate. Why do you talk such nonsense? It's not nonsense. It's written in my book. Then Obstinate laughed. How many times have I to tell you that your book is full of garbage? There's not one word that's true. Now, are you coming back or not? Obstinate looked very cross, and a little Christian's heart began to beat faster. But he answered bravely, No, I'm going to the king. Well, you may go then, said Obstinate. Come, Pliable. We might have saved ourselves trouble of running after such a silly rabbit. He doesn't know when he's well off. But Pliable stood still. Don't you laugh at him. Just supposing the book is true, he will be off better off than we are. I think I shall go too. Oh, do come with me, cried little Christian. You don't know how happy we shall be when we're living with a king. Are you sure you can find the city? asked Pliable. Yes, Evangelist told me what to do. We must go to that gate beyond, and the gatekeeper will show us the way. You don't mean to say you're going, said Obstinate. Why, even if there was a celestial city, two boys like you could never find it. Pliable did not answer, but he made a few steps forward by the side of a little cushion. He'd often listened to the words of the strangers, and he thought, I may as well go as far as the narrow gate and see what the road looks like. I'm not surprised that little Christian, continued Obstinate, but really, Pliable, you ought to have more sense. Just come back with me, and I'll not tell anyone what you said you were going. But Pliable was not very fond of Obstinate, and he felt pleased at the idea of having his own way, so he answered, It's no use talking. I've made up my mind. Goodbye, if you won't come too. No, thank you. I'm glad enough to be rid of you both. And with a mocking smile on his face, Obstinate turned back toward the City of Destruction.